Well, hello and welcome to my channel. Okay, I have had a request to try to use die cuts and embossing folders without an embossing die cut machine. Challenge accepted. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to get die cuts without a die cutting machine. I'm going to show you how to get embossed what without a machine no way oh yes way embossed without a machine what oh yes so if you want to know how I did this and this and this without a cuddle bug or without a big shot or whichever tool whichever machine you have heard about and this is in no way of saying that you should not purchase those machines because I would love to have one of those machines but right now it's not in my budget so I have come up with hacks using kitchen utensils to show you how and a little bit of water so stay tuned so you can see Mandy's way, <laughs> the frugal way of doing these techniques without the machine. I hope you'll stick around and watch. Well, good morning. Okay, I wanted to do a quick video here to show a trick of mine and to try something else. So. How many of us have seen these amazing embossing folders at the store, but we do not purchase them because we don't have an embossing or die cutting machine? Oh, well, guess what? You see these on sale? Snag them up because I'm about to show you a trick that you can use these embossing folders without the machine. Are you ready for this? Okay. In this video, this whole video, I'm going to be using two kinds of paper. And I have two tricks. Embossing folder is just the first one. Okay. I'm going to be using my Nina cardstock 90 pound. See right here, 90 pound. And it's just the bright white. Okay. Then I'm also using the Recollections shades of red 65 pound so these are the only two that you're going to see me use throughout this entire video and i'm going to show you my little trick let's see we'll use this one to start out with this is my little trick um this is a we are memories keeper or we are memory keepers embossing folder and it's the trees, the birchwood trees. Okay, we're going to do it with a piece of the 90 pound. Okay, this is where I want to start. So I'm going to put it in here and just, I don't like to measure. So we're just going to cut it down like this. No scissors, no problem, right? Okay. Here's this. Now, we're going to take a light mist of water. Just a light mist, right? Now, what if you don't have an emboss or a bone folder or um, something along those lines? That's okay. Not a problem. You go into your kitchen and you grab a spoon or you grab... A butter knife okay and this is what you do it's wet right so you're gonna push as hard as you can without hurting yourself because we don't want you to hurt yourself push this together just like this all the way around edge to edge 
and you can see I'm not pushing extremely hard. Now, doing it this way, it may take the, the grid lines off the top. So you can flip it over and do it on this side if you would prefer. Then that way it's not going to mess up your, your lines that are on there, just in case you do get a die cutting machine in the future. All right, all the way around the edges, right along the fold, right through the center. Now, the more you wet your paper, the easier this stage will be right here, okay? I just put a very light mist on my paper, very light mist. Now, we're going to open it up and look at that. Look at that. Tell me that that is not gorgeous. Turn it over. Oh, there's the raised area. Isn't that amazing? Oh my goodness. And now this is not wet. This is not drenched. So you can immediately... <coughs> excuse me. You can immediately take your ink pad... Whatever ink you want, I'm going to use my brown stays on ganache, the ganache, and I'm going to go over the raised trees, okay? And you just go right over them just like this. And you can do so many things. You can emboss them now if you have the wet emboss, the embossing powder. You can do it that way with your, um, with your Versamark ink. You know, go over where the trees are and emboss them and add some sparkle or some color or some shine or whatever you want because they are raised enough that you can see them now. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, it's so gorgeous. I love it. Okay, so that's just one example. One way, right? And like I said, you can use it with the ball of the spoon if you do not have a bone folder i know i've had a lot of people say i don't have a bone folder i can't do that technique okay you don't have to have a bone folder and just a heads up and just here's a few different bone folders that that we have around here i know i have a couple more there's this one um oh they're over here i was like where's my favorite ones i have this one and I have this one. Now, this technique works very well with a bone folder or a spoon. Honestly, it does not matter which one you use. Actually, I kind of feel like the spoon was easier to use. Okay, so no bone folder, no problem. No embossing machine or die cutting machine, no problem. We're going to figure this out. We're going to be able to use all of the fancy stuff without having the fancy price tags on stuff, right? Okay, so is it maybe just that folder? I have, well, this one's a We Are Memory Keeper also. So let's go to one that's not. Okay, let's go to, I have the Doris ones. Um, let's use this flower one. This is a very intricate one here. It has the flower on it, right? Okay, so let's try this with the 65 pound, with the red this time. We're gonna do it, do it the exact same way. I'm gonna put it in here. I'm gonna tear it off because I don't like to measure anything. If I don't have to measure it, that's even better. Oh, I just ripped it, which is okay, because I'm just going for the flowers here. Not a big deal. If I was really worried, I would have done it down on the on the desk here. Okay, we're going to open it back up. Lightly mist. If you guys have one of these misters, you know the water barely comes out in a very light mist. One, two, three. That's it. Okay? On one side of the paper. You don't even have to do both sides or anything like that. All right, close it down, and immediately, right over the top of this flower, and I'm barely putting pressure. I mean, you couldn't tell by the sound of my voice. If I was really getting in there, I'd be straining like that. I'm not. 
I'm just barely putting, I mean, I'm putting a little muscle behind it, of course. My paper is starting to fall off of my desk over here. Oh, no. craft a lunch. Crap. Stay, paper, stay. Okay. So we're going to just rub it. Make sure you get every spot. That is definitely one thing that you do want to do. And you're just pushing, pushing. Okay. Here we go. Now we're going to lift it up. Now, say that when I lifted it, it wasn't very deep. It wasn't a, a good emboss, like a crisp emboss. Okay, well, I can check it like this. And make sure that it's all good. If it's not, then I'll just close it back and I'll just go right over it again. And you just keep doing that until you're happy with the way it looks. I'm happy with the way it looks. It looked pretty dang good to me. So we're going to pop that whole thing open. And look. Now this is a little bit wet over on this area. You can see the paper there. It's a little bit darker red. But that's okay. It will dry, and it will dry flat. Now, if I use my heat gun, it will make the paper crinkle because, you know, the heat will make the paper crinkle, right? Okay, so now this part is done, and I can take another. I'll try the archival, black archival ink this time, and we'll just lightly go over the flowers here. I'm doing a red and black canvas right now for a friend. This would be a perfect addition to that. Whew. Gorgeous. And I like my grunge. So this is just one idea that you can do after you've embossed it, of course. Lots of different things that you can do with it. But there we go. Now we have two different embossing folders done just like that completely embossed and you can see here's the other side gorgeous same with this one done done I love it okay now you can emboss this or I mean you can take the ink pad over this side too it and you can do different colors I have a purple here this one is gothic purple stays on now, if I went over this side, then the trees are going to be in the background. And in between the trees is the raised area, right? Now, tell me that that doesn't just look amazing. Gorgeous. Yes, ma'am and sir. Whew. Okay. Now... The next trick that I want to show you guys has nothing to do with embossing folders. So I'm going to pause just so I can clean this off and bring out my other stuff. Ready? I'll be right back. Okay, so for part two of my DIY hacks, I am going to show you a trick with the only dies that I have. So these are die cut um, ornament shapes. I was sent these. I do not have a die cut machine, an embossing machine, a big shot, a cuddle bug, whatever. I don't have any of that. So this is the only die cut that I have, a die cut set. And it's a big ornament and a little ornament, okay? Well, how can we use these if we don't have the embossing machine? Well, I'm about to show you because I just cut these out using this, these dies right here. And you can see, let me move this one out of the way here. Let me pick this up. Try to, here we go. You can see the intricate detail this way. There you go. It looks pretty darn good, right? There's one little, one little spot right there that doesn't look the greatest part in my dirty fingernails. <laughs> I've been working hard on this canvas. I have paint all over my fingernails. Anyway, this is the little one that I just cut. 
here's my scraps from this from the little one that I just did okay so now we're gonna do the big one and I'm gonna show you how so when you tape this down to your paper there are two sides to the die cut okay there is a shiny side like this that has like a track and then the other side is completely flush you want to put your track side down to your paper so this is the part right here that's going to um, that's going to cut through your paper. These are the like knife pieces, for lack of a better word. Okay, so you want this side to be down on your paper, which is how I have this one here. See, I have it taped down so that the knife side is down. Okay, so we're gonna put that down. We're going to flip our paper over and you can feel where it is. You can kind of rub it down and see the shape of it, okay? So this is what I did first. So I have a general idea of where my pieces are, where I'm going to rub to make it cut. Now, again, back to my expensive tool that I got out of my kitchen the handy dandy butter knife alright I'm using this rounded end if you do not have a bone folder or if your bone folder is you know you don't want to tear it up because if you use your bone folder to do this it will put cuts and grooves into the edge of your bone folder which if you have several no biggie right but if you don't, or you don't have a bone folder at all, which is my request, you're welcome, Nina, <laughs> for coming up with this idea here, um, how to do this without the machine. I'm going to take the rounded end, and you can do it, most likely, with the spoon, too. It'll probably just take a little bit longer with the spoon, but you just rub over the edge here. I did the first one with the knife. It is starting to go through, but it would take a lot more elbow grease so with the spoon than it will with the knife. So I'm going to just do this. All the way around. You just rub over it, and you can see where it's cutting through. You can see it's starting to cut through there. See that? Okay. Okay, sure, Mandy. It's cutting through on those big straight edges, but what about that intricate detail up there? What about that part? Well, we're going to get there. So we're going to go all the way around. until you see that it is cut all the way around. Now, if you don't like the sound, because this will eventually hit the metal, that's what you hear. Like, you will hear, as it cuts through the paper, you will hear the metal on metal. If you do not like that sound, you can use a piece of fun foam, and this is just the kids' fun foam. I used it here. You can put it over the top of it, and you can actually hear the paper pop as it's cutting it by doing it that way. It takes a lot more time doing it that way. This, you just keep going. And it's not like nails on a chalkboard for me. Like usually noises like that, like give me goosebumps. No goosebumps. I don't know why, but no goosebumps. Okay, so now we are out completely here in the center it's still taped down on the other side obviously but for the most part we have gotten the entire center out so there is tape there but the center is out okay and the outer edge same it's out except for where it's taped Okay, so now we're going to do this part, the little bow here, this little fancy bow. 
You can see I've started to go up that way. Turn it around and do it this way. And it's on the glass. Maybe I shouldn't do it on the glass. Maybe I should do it on top of the foam. And you can layer it. And if you don't have kids fun foam, you can use styrofoam or, you know, packaging, whatever. Like this is just cheapy foam stuff. You can use this instead of the fun foam. So whatever you have laying around, just grab it and try it. All right, there's the, the center of that bow out. And I think that we're all cut. I think that we're cut. Oh, maybe not right here. There we go. There we go. We are all the way around. Now we're going to take this piece off. Oh, it didn't cut it all the way through right here at this edge. That's okay. Right back over it. That simple. Seriously, that simple. Okay, so now we're going to take the tape off. And I just keep sticking my tape to the edge of my tape roll there. Now, I've never used a die cut machine, so I don't know all of these details. That's a perfect circle right there, though, huh? I will be keeping that. I don't know how all of it works on the die cutting machine, but I'm assuming pretty darn close to what I just did here, right? And there it is. There it is. Perfect. There is not one flourish in this anywhere. It even has the little tiny cuts right here that it has in here. Perfect. So I myself We'll probably be getting more dies now that I know that I can die cut stuff all on my own without a big fancy die cut machine. It's just going to take a little bit. Well, not uh, honestly, it's not really going to take that much more time because by the time I get the machine out, get the plates out, tape the dies down to the paper, do my sandwich, put it through, crank it, all that, take it apart, take all this stuff back out. I mean, I just did this. We're not even at 10 minutes yet, guys. I mean, come on. I think that's pretty darn good. So if you just have one little die that you want to cut out and you don't want to get out your machine, here's a quick trick. I just, I, a butter knife. Or even, even if you don't have the butter knife, the end of your spoon. You know, there's, I got a couple different spoons out here um, to show you could use this side of the spoon, the flat side there, or like this one is even kind of funkified. You could use this part, the rounded part here. So there's lots of different ways. Of course, this one is thicker and it's rounded on the edge. And that's why I chose to try that one first because I thought I would have better results with that one. But I mean, I'd say it's pretty darn good. I am happy with that. You guys try it. You guys let me know what you think. If there are any suggestions on how I can do this even better, please let me know. Um, oh, one trick that I did notice when I was doing this one here, this circle piece got stuck in this, in this um, die cut piece here. Okay, well, if you notice, it has these little tiny holes. I took my pokey tool and very lightly pushed through here and it popped it right out. Now you can barely see 
on this side, you can barely see that little tiny hole poke right there. See that? I don't even, oops, I don't even know if you can see that or not. But it's such a tiny little poke right there. I left it so I could rub my fingernail over it and show you guys. I'm sure I can get it to disappear. Oh, look, it's gone. So fancy. All these fancy tools, you know. I'm telling you. I like the fancy tools. Okay, so there you go. That's my hack. That's my trick. We have the die cut pieces without the die cut machine. We have the embossing pages using the embossing folders without the machine. I mean, I'm happy. What do you guys think? Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me what you think. I'm excited. I hope that I've helped at least Nina, who has asked me to do this for her. Um, and if I've helped anybody else, oh, let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much. I love you guys. We will chat later. Bye. Big love.